Did you know that simply by having an online presence, it makes you a target to be scammed or become a victim of cybercrime? It's a myth that only stupid people get scammed. Scams are orchestrated by highly sophisticated and well-organized groups of people that work worldwide and they operate 24-7 with literally military precision. They are experts in mind control and in alienating victims from their circle of trust. The show is sponsored by Be Live Media. We are passionate about responsible social media advocacy and creating a safe space for social media users. Today, we've got a special guest, clinical and organizational psychologist, Dorian Cora Wheel. Don't go away, we will be right back. And welcome to episode 12 of the Responsible Social Media Show. I'm your host, Bridgetti Limbanda. Our special guest for today is Dorian Cara Wheel, also known as Dr. D. Dr. D is a clinical and organizational psychologist with over 30 years experience in hospital, private and corporate practice. Dr. D is renowned as South Africa's leading media psychologist and she's regularly appointed for comment on current issues and was also the expert psychologist on the Oscar Pretorius trial. Often a lone voice, she is acclaimed for her balanced views and in-depth psycholo psychological understanding. Dr. D has interviewed people such as the Dalai Lama, Bishop Desmond Tutu, Mother Teresa, and a host of international and local politicians, authors, and experts. She's known as a dynamic, knowledgeable, and life-changing speaker, and has addressed audiences and facilitated groups in 56 countries. In 2019, Dory was honored by the Professional Speakers Association and inducted into the Equator Hall of Fame. Educator Hall of Fame. Dr. D has received recognition for her outstanding contribution to the betterment of lives of people and the South African society at large. She's an animatrix, a storyteller, a passionate and compassionate life participant who enjoys design, exciting cooking, music and art. But she says her greatest achievement is to be the mother of her 22-year-old twins, Dean Harrison and Gemma Clare. So let's welcome Dr. D to the show. Very, very nice. I think I'm going to take you everywhere with that fabulous introduction. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm delighted to be on the show because who would have thought with the so-called advancement of technology, as we call it, the fourth industrial revolution, it's also going to be paralleled with a lot of obstacles and a huge amount of danger that comes with it. So, you know, while on the one hand, we're always lauding the progress and talking about things like artificial intelligence and new possibilities because of technology, from my point of view as a psychologist, I also have to focus on the downside and the dangers that come with it as well. And that's this is what the show is about. So I'm really delighted to be participating in this very, very important topic. Awesome. So glad to have you. I'm going to lunge right into the conversation. So many people mistakenly believe that only stupid people get scammed, but it's simply not true. Um, we've had professionals such as doctors, lawyers, psychologists who have fallen victim to scams. And just one interesting example, um, about two weeks ago, I interviewed Jonathan Farley. He uh, graduated summa cum laude and won the Oxford University's highest awards for mathematics um, and yet he fell victim to a very elaborate romance scam. So my question to you is, how do we help people understand why they should not abandon family members, uh, friends or colleagues who fall victim to this kind of um, cybercrime? 
Look, I think that's a really important question, but if you don't mind, I'd like to rewind a little bit to what you said in the beginning, the kind of perception that it's only stupid people. You know, that alludes to the thing of what stupid is and what clever is. You're talking here about intellectual intelligence. There are all kinds of intelligences. There's emotion and intelligence. There's streetwise intelligence. There's social intelligence. And in our minds, we think that intelligence is only clever. The ones who get the highest degrees and who you know, have status and money and power, forgetting that we are all members of the human race and that we are vulnerable to other aspects that might um, influence us. For instance, all of us are wired for connection. As mm. people, it doesn't matter how smart you are. We all need love. We all need attention. We all want recognition. And so to be wired for connection is such a basic part. The only people who don't really want that are usually psychopathic. So the need for that kind of attention and recognition makes us all vulnerable, irrespective of how successful we are in the traditional sense in terms of money, status, or power. So from a romantic point of view, you know, when we feel that this is what we're looking for, or that there's a gap in our lives, that kind of usual measurement of intelligence doesn't really play a part. And that, as you said, that the, these people who are organized into syndicates, which I think is just both horrific and quite fascinating, have learned the art of gentling, of relating to people, of developing trust subtly it's all they know how to kind of drop this poison drop by drop by drop you know into the minds of their victims such that the victims are very very often unsuspecting irrespective of how successful you are and one of the things that we certainly will talk about is your question at the end why do people why do their families abandon them and i think that there's a, lots of answers to that you know, one of them is that they leave the scam. First of all, many don't even believe that they've been scammed in the beginning. Even when authorities come and say, look, this has been a scam, they somehow they want to just hold on to the belief that somehow it might become right. Or when they do accept that there is a scam, the feelings of how could I have been so stupid? How could I have been so vulnerable? are overwhelming and embarrassing for people. And at a time where they need their family the most and they need connection the most and they need understanding the most because this kind of thing can really happen to everyone. They're mm. often the most embarrassed to reach out and to say, listen, I, me, I just fell for this. Let me tell you honestly in a straightforward way. It seemed amazing. It was romantic. He seemed to be kind, or she, because not it's more women than men who get scammed, but it certainly is the other way around. And you know, it's something that I was excited about. It was it was it was I acted impulsively. And people, one of the characteristics of people who are scammed is impulsivity. And that's not only to do with the scamming, you know, the, the, the a lot of the characteristics, because the scamming happens so often, have been measured. And one of them is impulsivity, because they are asked by the scammers to make decisions very urgently. So, so you know, they'll build up and build up and build up. And then at the end of the build up, they'll say, listen, I just need um, 100,000 rand for this urgent operation or this ticket or something that will be paid back to you within a couple of hours. And the feeling is you don't have a time to sit and think about it. So people tend to be more impulsive and make up their minds quickly. But remember that it's the end of a long process mm. sometimes of the development of trust and the development of alienation. So there's a subtle way of saying, get off the dating site, just communicate with me directly. Or you know what, this is our secret. It's just me and you, babe, me and you against the world. So please don't discuss it with your family and friends. They might not be on your side. They're so, very clever that way. Very, very, very clever. Very clever. So I'm talking a lot, but let me, let me 
hear from you and answer some of your questions. So just tying into what you said now, experience shows that when you approach, and I mean, this has happened to me as well. You know, I've said to someone, you're being scammed. So what happens is that when you approach a person that you know is being scammed, you will find that that person now becomes your enemy. They're going to believe the scammer above you. In fact, they will actually go back to the scammer and tell them what you said. So how can we as family and friends negate this kind of response from a victim? Look, I think that it's an excellent question because don't forget, you know, not everything that counts can be counted. And not everything that can be counted counts. These people want to believe the scammer. They want desperately to because of some of the reasons that I've said already. There's the overall romantic reason. They are extremely flattering and say, you know, no one has seen these amazing characteristics in you like I have. Mm -hmm. And so people want to fall for that kind of talk more at the time than they want to fall for the fact or believe in the fact that it's not real. There's an intrinsic wish, a wish that this is real. So I think that a way to go about it is not to go about and say, listen, you know, you're such an idiot. Can't you see? Because I could tell from a mile away that you're mm. being scammed because they'll just cut you off. A way to do it would be to join with the person, not in terms of making them believe something that's not true, but in terms of understanding what some of their experience is. So you would say to the person, this is a really tough conversation for me to have. It's going to be extremely difficult for you to even listen to me because there's such a wish for you to go along with us. And I absolutely understand it. And you caught up with it and it's hard. It's, there's this, this possibility and so many people have been caught with this before. Um, let's take a look at it or if you want. They might still dismiss you and say, leave me alone. But I think that you've got more chance without being initially too forceful or critical and saying, you know, my goodness me, it could happen to me. So many people have fallen to the, for this. And let's just take a look at it factually, especially if this person starts approaching money and asking you for anything, and most especially asking you for something suddenly and cutting you off from your family. Those are kind of sure signs. So you would say, this is hard for you to believe. Your response is likely to alienate, alienate me, mm. in the scammer. So you can anticipate what the person might be feeling and thinking in the hope that they could listen to you a little bit more receptively. Yeah. So... I'm also interested to find out uh, or just talk a little bit about the power of the visual because what happens is that the victim falls in love and creates this relationship around a picture that they've seen um, online. They become attracted to this picture um, and, and victims are deceived and indoctrinated. And I love the expression you used earlier. You said it's like this drip, drip, drip technique that they... Yeah that they use. Um, so, so how is it that, and otherwise, and this speaks to what you said earlier as well, you know, about the uh, various aspects of intelligence and intellect. So how does an, an otherwise intelligent person get tricked into this kind of relationship that makes them willing to not just part with their cash, but people have pawned their, their cars, uh -huh. they've it's sold their houses. I mean, you, you cannot imagine the lengths that people have gone to to appease someone they've never met in person. Because there's an idealized fantasy. As you say, it starts with the photograph. Now, we attribute certain characteristics to the visual. So if we see, and I mean, our, our, the literature on this seems to show that there's quite a predominance of army men who get shown in these kind of pictures because of the fantasy of the man in the uniform, the good-looking guy. The fantasy is that if he's in the army fighting for king and country, 
there's no thought that he's not a good global citizen mm -hmm. and that you don't believe him. So these kind of images are often associated with other kinds of beliefs. There's a whole lot of work, as we know, that attributes certain characteristics to people who are overweight. There, there are a lot of, there's a material that shows that if you look in a certain way for some kinds of organizations, you're going to get the job more easily mm -hmm. and that, uh, that you're going to get the job more less. Now, these people who are in these organized crime syndicates, no doubt have made a study of this and are getting probably advice that's highly sought after or paid for of what is likely to work to, to some people. So it's not just an image. You see the image, but then you think various thoughts associated with the, the image that have been part of your introjects, the beliefs that you have introjected. In other words, inhaled through society, through your parents and so on, which have become part of your DNA that they are unquestioned beliefs. So the images evoke certain beliefs and then you act on the beliefs it's not just on the image and and because of our own needs as people the intellectual part i mean keep going back to it because it's almost unbelievable how can you know a college professor or how can someone who is ceo or whatever it is when it comes to looking for relationship and recognition and love and all of those things that hasn't got much to do with the job that you've got it's like you know not everything that counts can be counted this is something that can't be can't be can't be measured but is a human need and so there's a lot that says at last maybe this is this is now happening to me i might have had failed relationships before and it's interesting to look at the age of people who are regularly scammed and it is predominantly women but as i said not only people used to think that it was older people actually the predominance is more middle-aged mm. and the reason for that is because these scammers understand that they like you to have more dispose more income so one of the reasons why they target you is who can who will be parted from their money and who has the money and so and also they find that in people who are intelligent in the way that we've been talking about it there are more of those people who tend to use the dating sites which is where the the p, these people kind of will target quite a lot of the time so yeah there, there are lots of reasons that come into it so I want to ask you lastly, there's the, the effects on the scammed victims is, is seems to be largely undocumented so far. And because it's not well documented, there aren't really protocols for, for treating victims mm -hmm. um, psychologically, but also uh, when it comes to reporting. In fact, in most cases, almost all cases, the police won't even take um, the reports most people get the response we're not debt collectors um sure. and so you know that sort of intensifies the burden against the victim because now they are further they already feel the personal shame and so now society is shaming them the police force is shaming them um in addition to that how do you think we could address these gaps and develop protocols Look, I think it's the most important question. The first thing is what you're doing right now, and that's educating. You know, there's still a judgment, a huge judgment against the victims. Like, and then you can turn around and say, well, you know, you made your bed, you sleep in it. And whereas I think that there's a sort of targeted, there's a, there's a vulnerability which is difficult to kind of, re in our society, there's a whole kind of sanction against being vulnerable. Um, and, and I think to be able to have this education that you're talking about, where the, the people who have been scammed can turn around and say, my goodness, I was one. I can now with awareness look back and say, I missed that little point 
or I miss that. And awareness is the first step to change. And that I'm not going to let the suffering go to waste. It's not that I'm never going to trust anyone else again in my life. You know, what, what is going to happen is that I am a different person now from the experience and I will be more wary about the signs and I will be more circumspect but these kind of things are quite embarrassing to share so these programs like you're doing now I think really goes a long way also you know there there are I mean we spoke about impulsivity we spoke about some of these people one of the characteristics that came out in the literature is that often they don't see themselves or act in a very socially reaching out kind of way. So they might often be more the kind of people who find it difficult to ask for help or to reach out. There were some questions in trying to identify the characteristics of these people that say that uh, there, there's a more preponderance who um, that won't go next door to the neighbor and say you've just moved in can i help you so there's something about already needing to be self-sufficient and the intelligence part is interesting because people who tend to be intellectually intelligent might also have a higher degree of confidence so they wouldn't imagine themselves they're confident, well-functioning person, and they wouldn't imagine themselves being scammed or, or falling for this kind of thing, which means when they are, the embarrassment is, is really even more. So I think that this kind of show, together with the huge you know, development of technology, it has to go hand in hand. This is what can happen, and it happens to you and to me, and it happens because we're human and because we're wanting to believe in ourselves and that people recognize us, and we're looking for that, that kind of relationship, which to an extent may be an exaggerated ideal fantasy based mm -hmm. on a picture that we saw in the beginning, but all of these things plus the absolute deliberate strategic cleverness of the perpetrators come into conspire to come into play. So we need more understanding. And we can start with your first question. Families, please, please understand the embarrassment. This is where your pe people need you. Understand what happened. Be available to them. Assist them through this difficult period, not in a shameful kind of way, but in a way that says, my goodness, what a hugely, hugely unfortunate and devastating experience you have, you've been through, and I'm here for you. Wow, that kind of nutshells it very, very nicely. Um, you, I think you may know a lady by the name of Gillian Goldman. Goldman. Yes, she, she fell victim, victim to... A, a scamming syndicate as well and just recently she told her story in the newspapers and I was horrified at the response from the public um, you know people just were regurgitating comments like well you're not the smartest cookie or you know yeah. you're not a and I, I looked at this and I thought you know there's just a need for so much education still because Absolutely. obviously people are making comments not from an educated place no, from a really judgmental place and from a lack of understanding and breadth of understanding of all of the components of being a human being. You know, it really is. And I can tell you something, seeing that you mentioned it. I've met up with her, with, with Gillian, quite a number of years ago. I think we had met a couple of times at conferences before. And I'd met up with her and I was so taken with her. She's a beautiful, well-groomed, highly educated woman. We sat and spoke that evening and got on exceptionally well. And we arranged to meet afterwards because we enjoyed each other's company so much. Then she invited me to talk at her Toastmasters Club, Toastmasters Club, um, and which wasn't the most successful, but that was nothing to do with Gillian. I had recently lost my husband previous to that. And so I was still really going through a difficult time at that time. I remember it very, very well. But, you know, she was compelling. Somebody who I wanted to spend more time with didn't appear to be anything other than an intelligent, well-put-together, 
interesting woman. And that was my own experience of her before all of this happened. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. And I mean, her family has abandoned her as well. Um, and, you know, they're in a financial position to help her, but they've literally thrown her under the bus because she was a victim of um, of an elaborate scam. And that's a shame, you know, and we're hoping to change that through programs like this and educating the public to understand what's really behind it. And it's got nothing to do with um, the kind of intelligence that you said um, people think of initially. Yeah, absolutely. I think that what might bridge the gap just a little bit between people coming to the fore, family members coming to the fore, is that if the victim of the scam recognise their, their inadvertent role, because I'm not being judgmental, that they, and say, look, it should have been, I, I didn't notice this. I wanted it to be true. There was this little sign and that. I mean, one of the people that I've interviewed several times is Tracy Going, but she wasn't really a victim of this, but she was a victim of huge abuse. And in retrospect, you know, she speaks about things that she would do differently next time, little signs that she didn't pick up. And I think that if the victim would deal with their own shame and embarrassment and say, listen, I, you know, I'm now aware I do take some, you know, it wasn't only something that absolutely happened to me. I played a part in that. I fell for it. I encouraged it. I believed in it. So when you show that you have now learned something about the ability to respond, it might do something about the family just saying, oh, you know, she's just an entitled victim with no responsibility, therefore, why should I help her? So I think it's that that kind of two-way thing that could help with it. Dr. D, thank you so much. You've given us a lot of insight, and uh, I want to thank you for your time, and thank you to the viewers watching live and on the replay. Um, it was awesome. Really appreciate your assistance today. Thank you very much. I love the show. Maybe look forward to more. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank Remember you. to practice responsible social media. Let's educate ourselves, create awareness, one conversation at a time.